Hey guys, how's it going? It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It feels fall today. I think the high is supposed to be in the low 70s. And Benjamin is currently inside, supposed to be taking a nap, but he is just messing around in his room. He's throwing those foam blocks everywhere right now, just like chucking them around his room. Anyway, so I have my phone here so I can monitor what's going on. We thought we would pop out here quick and film a succulent unboxing. So a uh, Mountain Crest Gardens, this is where the succulents are from. We have done an unboxing from them before, but it's been, I think it's been like two years at least since we did that. And they reached out again, um, Aaron was chatting with them and they wondered if we would like any succulents to use in projects. And of course I do, of course, but I don't really like, I'm kind of out of the loop. I have no idea what's in this box. Aaron and they were talking, Aaron and them, Aaron and they. Anyway, um, so they just told Aaron, just order some stuff that you think you guys might like. Aaron asked me about it and I kind of blew him off because I was busy at the moment. So Aaron placed the order and they just arrived last night. And I don't know how they're gonna be because like see how it says like arrows pointing up this way. The box was flipped on its end when it was dropped off. So I'm hopeful that everything inside is okay. Doesn't that frustrate you when you see like clearly on the box it says this end up with arrows and it's disregarded. Ah, let's just get into the box. <laughs> Mountain Crest did do a really good job of packing their succulents last time, so I'm pretty sure we won't run into any issues here. We've also got both cats. They're sitting in both of these chairs right next to me, Russell and Cheddar. Okay, so first look here, we've got a bunch of filler and some little boxes and some paperwork. Okay, so if this is, oh, this is a list of what Aaron ordered. I don't wanna look, cause I wanna be surprised. Oh, and this little guide right here has like um, a guide. Let's get started what to do when you get your succulents. So unpack, water, protect, indoor, outdoor care. And then there's some care tips in here as well and how to deal with succulent cuttings, etc. That's interesting, that's really good. Yeah, it's good to be thorough like that so people have success. Aaron grabbed me a bag to put some of this stuff in so I don't have to make a big mess on the ground. So just a second, I'm gonna to try to be really careful about this, not make a mess. Starting to see the tops of some of the plants, unearthing them slowly. There is a little bit of dirt, but not. I don't see anything that's like been jostled out of its container, so that's good. So I'm just gonna pull these out one at a time and we'll take a look. They're all in their own individual little sleeves here. Just a little bit of soil. This is a Pearl von Nuremberg Echeveria. That looks really good, really healthy. I am gonna probably have to grab, I have a little brush, it's Aaron's lens cleaning brush that I like to kind of clean succulents off with. So I'll probably have to do that with some of these. This is a Gasteria called Flow. Really pretty, I always like the strappiness of these. They almost like look mangave or agave-ish. This is a Senecio called Blue Chalk Sticks. This is one I try not to put my fingers all over because it does like get that powdery coat like Echeverias do. Uh, and so if you touch them too much, it kind of ruins that aesthetic. Mm, I like this one. What is this, a Haworthia? What kind of Haworthia? This one says Haworthia cuspidata, cuspidata, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I wonder if that's a, I wonder if that's a, a variety name or if that's like the actual temperature it can go down to. I don't know. You see that? 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Does that mean it's hardy to 30? Because that's pretty awesome if it is. Oh, more packing material. It does help, this packing material does help keep everything in place. So this is a hardy one. This is a Sampa Semper Vivum called Black. Love it. And this one, as the temperatures cool down, the colors intensify. So it will get, I've had this one before. It will get like more deep red, like kind of a blackish burgundy color. And the more of the leaves will be that color than green. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce this name. Corpus Galeria ice plant. That's cool looking. I mean, I've had these, but I've never Corpus Galeria. I'm probably saying that so wrong. These are cool looking though. This is a Haworthia retusa Giraldi. These almost look like watery. Like it almost looks like you could touch their leaves and they would like form into this pile of water somehow. They're so cool. And this is another Haworthia Symbiformis. Looks a little tighter than the last one. And it's got like little um, hairs on the end of each one of the leaves. And this one's smooth. Let's take a look at all three of these. How cool, little Haworthia collection. I think when we went down to California, 
that went first year that we were doing videos. That's the first time that I ever saw Haworthia, and it was at that little nursery we stopped at that had the big tall blue cactus, oh, do you remember? Really? Yeah, and I was like, what is this? I'd never seen it. This is an Echeveria setosa variegated minor. It's what the tag says, nice icy blue with kind of purple undersides of the leaves and like hairy looking, kind of like spider legs kind of feel. Haworthia zebra plant. These are pretty classic. These are a good one to have around and a really good succulent to start with if you're a beginner. They can take a lot of abuse and lower light too. Well, that's an Echeveria. I'm not sure the exact variety. I've had ones before that look very similar to this one. Really pretty. I like the different variation of color. Look at this. Here we go again. Another grouping of Echeverias. They're so different and so beautiful. This is a sedum called Copper Tone. It looks an awful lot like Firestorm. Oh, this is a perennial favorite of mine. Hold on, let me clean it up. Echeveria Lola. I've always been a huge fan of this one, ever since the very beginning of my love for succulents. I just like how tight the growth habit is. I like the colors, it's very pastel, and just very pleasing to look at. This next one's cool, it's called the Pickle Plant, Delisperma. Look at how cool! Pickle Plant, that's such a great name! It's a pack of area called Jewel Tone. That's a really pretty, kind of medium, like sagey almost green, with pink tips. Cute. Oh, we got two of the same ones here. So these are a Chick Charm Semper Vivum called Gold Nugget. They're a zone three, I think. Zone three through eight. And as the temperatures cool down, they get this amazing coloring. So I've had these before. And in the summertime when it's warmer out, um, they tend to be more green. And then the cold just intensifies the color. And they'll get just, they'll get like these picture, this picture looks like the gold color with the bright orange tips. They're just a really interesting Semper Vivum. Another Echeveria Pearl von Nuremberg. Haworthia planifloria. Ooh, a big Haworthia. Whoa, look at that beast. That's huge. This is a Haworthia. Oh, I can't read the, the other name. It's kind of uh, worn off. Bummer, but it is a type of Haworthia and it's big. This is an Echeveria called Morning Beauty. Isn't that beautiful? The icy blue with the pink margins. This one has been touched quite a bit though. You can see the finger markings all over, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's still beautiful. This is an Anacampsuros, Anna, Anacampsuros Sunrise. And these, these do color up too, like quite a bit more pink and it's about ready to bloom. Okay, just a couple more loose ones and then we'll get into the little boxes in here. This is an Echeveria called Peacock Eye really pretty color again you can see all the finger markings on this one you know it may not be finger markings it may be markings from the packing material to be honest like i wonder if they would have put each one of the echeverias in one of these rather than letting well even then though the packing material gets over the top so i bet that's what it is is the packing material this is a crassula 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 miniature pine tree these are tough plants Okay, this one says caution, sharp spines and tips. Little peanuts, packing peanuts there. Well, that arrived pretty nice. So this is a Parodia aerobescens. That's a cute cactus. Okay, now we are into the little boxes. Let me get them all out first. Okay, I wanna do this big one first. Aaron says that this is a sample box or that's what he thinks it is. Oh my. <sighs> oh, a little bit of cleanup needing to be done on these, but look at how beautiful that is. Like if you just, if one wanted to just order a sample box, you get like a really good variation. There's string of pearls in there. There's a sedum, is that an Ogon sedum? No, Tokyo sun sedum. Um, there's Echeverias, Graptosedums, ice plant. Anacampsuros, Portulacaria variegata. And I'm wondering, does this change? I wonder if a sample box kind of changes yeah, based on just, what's on what's ready, but I'm guessing that they like want to give you a variation of color and texture and variety. So that's really cool. Aaron was just trying to look up on his phone what the exact name of the sample box is. We'll throw it on the screen because he wasn't able to find it real quick. So anyway, I think that's really neat. Do you remember what's in these last boxes? This looks like another sample box. There is soil. 
everywhere on top of these. Hold on, let me get these out and get them cleaned up real quick. First two, there's more. Oh, I really like this one, Alpenglow Graptocetum. That's gorgeous color, whoa. Okay, I'm gonna clean these off and we'll go through them name by name. Okay, so in that box, let me line these all up kind of tallest to shortest here. A couple of different types of jelly, uh, acetum jelly beans. So this is a pink jelly beans right here. And then this one is one called pork and beans right here. Then we've got a chocolate or a panda plant rather, not chocolate soldier, that's another type. Kind of looks like a chocolate soldier <laughs> with the soil on it. I need to take a brush after that one. Um, Crassula, there's two different Crassulas in here, string of buttons. Let's see, this one's called Ivory Towers. And that one's really like bold with pink margins around the leaves. And then this one is a Variegata. So a little bit more yellow in there. These are awesome plants to have. I love to take cuttings from that type because they're so easy to tuck into, you know, more full arrangements. And then we've got the Graptocetum Alpenglow. That looks so chocolatey. I think that is just the most gorgeous thing. It actually looks really beautiful. Look at that with the cactus. Isn't that so pretty? Then there's a string of pearls right here and that's a good looking one, very healthy. And a donkey tail or burrito, burrito sedum. Donkey's tail or burrito sedum. Oh, we've got a bigger echeveria in here. I think I'm gonna take her, tear it open that way. Oh, I dropped it in the garbage. Well, I guess I'm gonna be potting this one up today. <laughs> So no ID on this one, but it looks like another Echeveria, maybe Pearl von Nuremberg or something along those lines. I'm gonna have to put that one in some soil later. Oh, and this is like a mini sampler box. There's four in here. We've got another Graptocetum uh, Alpenglow. I'm actually happy about this. I usually like to get things in odd numbers. So now I have three containers of that. This is a sedum called Orange Delight. I don't think I've ever had that variety before. And a Graptivaria called Opalina. These have the most chubby leaves. They're so cute. And then another Graptocetum is this uh, California Sunset. Okay, I'm gonna line all these up so we can take a really close look. All right, they're all lined up. I love to look at them like this. You see the vast array of color and texture and variety. And I really think that Erin did a good job. Was that your first time ordering succulents? I mean, I don't know that you ever have done that before. Um, and so to end up with something that looks like this, it makes it so fun for someone like me, like to be able to open a box, not really know what's in it. And then now I have all these choices to use for projects and likely I'll just water them in today. That's what the instruction said. And they are pretty dry. Um, so I'll water them today, put them underneath some grow lights, and then they'll just stay in these containers until I'm ready to use them in a project. I don't typically uh, pot up my succulents in single containers, especially if they're small, but I sure think that would look cute. I mean, getting a bunch of little terracotta pots and then having like a collection on a shelf somewhere, I think that would be adorable. Uh, I do love that they're all tagged. That is something that not every single company does. And it can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you wanna research that plant a little bit. If you're getting like, let's say you order a sample box and they come in non, not tagged. Well, you didn't pick those out individually. Like these were ordered individually. So you'd be able to figure out based on what you ordered, what each plant was. But if you order a sample box and you get there's 16 in this box and you don't know what any of them are, then you don't know where to start to research how to take care of them. So I really appreciate when companies do that. I do think you can order these in bare root or cutting versions instead of potted if you want to. And I honestly feel like you'd probably receive them a little bit cleaner in terms of loose soil, just because you don't have soil to deal with. I honestly don't envy any plant company that has to ship plants. I don't know how, like if there is a method that exists to keep soil 100% in its container, especially when, you know, if they were delivered the way the box says, you know, this side up and they were never tipped, you'd probably receive them in pristine condition if they were just, you know, <laughs> placed along the way, um, the right side up, but it's just inevitable. They're gonna get tipped or something along the way, but they clean up really easily. I mean, I was able just to kind of like, I just do little puffs of air. It usually takes care of the bulk of it. And then I have a little lens brush, or you can use like a soft, tiny little paint brush to kind of uh, dislodge some of the soil in between the tighter areas. Um, and also when I water them today, that will help clean them up a little bit too, but I think they look pretty darn good. So anyway, that's it for the unboxing. Thought you guys might enjoy seeing this. Huge thank you to Mountain Crest Gardens for sending these out. It's always appreciated. I love to have 
fresh new plants to work with. Um, now we aren't partnered with, or this video isn't sponsored by Mountain Crest Gardens in any way, so we don't have a discount code or anything like that or a giveaway, um, and maybe we'll work on something like that in the future. I just thought you guys might like to see um, this new shipment. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.